also back with me tonight, Britt Hume, Fox News senior political analyst. Britt, good to see you this evening. Um, Hi, you say that that with each pass hi there, with each passing day, the argument for this lockdown, this nationwide lockdown, gets weaker and weaker. What do you mean by that? Two things, Martha. First, the collateral damage from it is extraordinary. I mean, we started this process, you may recall, the social distancing followed by the, you know, the full lockdown, almost in national quarantine, to protect our medical system from being overwhelmed. What's happening to our medical system now is that hospitals are failing across the country. Many are closing. I noticed the Mayo Clinic yesterday had a big set of layoffs. Um, the damage to our medical, our, our health care system, it seems to me, is something we really have to take into account here. It's very serious. Uh, that's just one example. The economic damage, of course, has been widely discussed. The budgetary harm is, you know, beyond belief. I mean, we're, we're saddling our country and our, mm -hmm. and our and future generations with debt on a scale. It was already high. Now it is far, far worse. Um, not to mention, you know, the toll on businesses which won't reopen and so on, the unemployment, the consequences for children of being locked up at home and not being able to go to school with their friends and be outside, mental health issues that arise from that, uh, the domestic violence that you heard referred to by earlier guests and so on. So that's, that's part of it, the damage from it. The second thing I'd say about it is that we basically, there are actually two points about this from, from what I think is a health point of view. This is a, this is a disease that overwhelmingly affects elderly people and those with serious underlying medical conditions. Um, everyone else is much less vulnerable, down to children who seem almost totally invulnerable to catching the disease. So that is, that is an issue, and that is an issue that can be addressed. Can be, uh, we can protect elderly people uh, by, by having them be quarantined. We also have to deal, you know, we, the, the fact that they're, they're so vulnerable has been proven by the outbreaks that have occurred in nursing homes. Yeah. So there is that. And secondly, of course, is the fact that if you look at what this tragic situation in the New, New York metropolitan area has really not been replicated anywhere else around the country, uh, and least of all in states like, you know, North Dakota, from whom, whose governor you just interviewed, it's just not happening. And, you know, this, this is not, in my view, all about simply we were so good at the mitigation efforts. I think there's reason to believe that, that this disease turned out, outside of certain populations, not to be nearly as severe and dangerous as we thought. And certainly the death rates, I think, will yeah. end up reflecting that. I mean, we saw that in Italy as well. There were pockets, areas in the Lombardy district that got hit very, very hard. And then there were other areas that were hit much less and still continue to be hit um, in much, much lower numbers. I just want to ask you, because I know you were intrigued, as I was, by this piece that Heather McDonald wrote about the impact of the fear factor of this. And she talks about people jogging and running in Central Park in the middle of New York City, which I have done a, a many, many times myself, with masks on. And this notion that, you know, that being outside, doesn't dissipate this virus, uh, that sort of, you know, and I wonder how long it's going to take for us to start to let go of some of that fear that's been so deeply driven in by the coverage in many ways of this, of this virus, Brett. You're, that's a, you're absolutely right about that, Martha. And I think what we've, what we've succeeded in doing, and this was principally because of the, of the, of the models of the disease's progress that, that the, your previous guest has provided, uh, which have turned out in case after case to be wildly off, and particularly the original model from the Imperial College in London, which was so extravagantly off base, yeah. but scared the daylights out of everybody. And I think that doctors uh, Fauci and Burks um, were content to sort of let that happen because I think they were afraid that people wouldn't socially distance, that people wouldn't uh, take, uh, engage in the mitigation efforts that they yeah, wanted to do. Yeah, I think you're do. right. And the result is we, we have a terrified population and we have people you know, mm -hmm. wearing masks while out jogging in Central Park seems to me to be almost a form of insanity. I mean, everything we've, to we've told about this, this, been told about this disease is it doesn't do well outdoors in open air. And yet people are wearing masks while jogging. So I think Heather McDonald's concern yeah. about fear is well placed. Yeah. Britt, thank you. Always good to see you, sir. You Thanks for coming in tonight. Right. Thank you.